Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Rip Van Winkle, written by Washington Irving. Now, before I go into some analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this story by Washington Irving it's a, is a short story. Washington Irving is known for his short stories um, and for, for his writings in general. Rip Van Winkle is about a man by the name of Rip Van Winkle who was born in, um, you know, during the time when um, America or the colonies, the 13 colonies, uh, were under British rule. So Rip Van Winkle, uh, he's a farmer, he's in New York. Uh, the setting of, of this short story is in New York. And Rip Van Winkle is a lazy man. He is lazy. He doesn't want to work. He has his own farm. He has kids. He has a wife that he has to take care of. But he doesn't want he doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to um work hard in anything. It's only him and his dog and his gun. Uh, they'll do jobs for everybody else in their town. They'll do jobs for their neighbors. They'll do jobs here and there. But when it comes to like um, doing anything, like him and his dog, when it comes to doing anything at home or doing anything for their family, they won't do it. So Rip Van Winkle is like, he is the town's guy. He'll do anything in the town. Everybody in the town knows him and he knows everybody. Uh, he'll help everybody else. He'll do some odd jobs here and there from for different people. Um, you know, some errands, things that they need fixed. Rip Van Winkle will fix it for them. But the thing is that when it comes to taking care of his crops, taking care of his farm, taking care of his family, his wife, he is lazy. He won't do anything. The only thing that Rip Van Winkle enjoys in life is pretty much him and his dog. For once in a while, they'll they'll go out for a walk and, and he'll just spend time with his, uh, with his dog. Um, his wife ends up nagging him a lot, talking to him a lot, trying to um, convince him, trying to, to make him um, do something, trying to make him um, provide for his family. But Rip Van Winkle, he just, he just, he's just lazy. He's not going to do anything. He doesn't want to do anything. Um, all he does is drink, um, yeah, you know, carry his gun everywhere he goes and, 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 you know, spend time with his dog. That's, that's all that he's interested in. Um, at the beginning of the short story, it, it's just, you know, him on his farm, um, him drinking, you know, he's drinking a lot. Uh, he's enjoying life, like the the laziest life you could have. Um, that's the life he wants to live. His wife is just this bothersome woman that lives with him that he has to listen to. Um, that, you know, the, we, we're told that um, their, their marriage goes on for a long time. And, and the longer the marriage goes on, the sharper her tongue gets, the, the more um hurtful you know like there's some people when they're talking um they're trying to hurt you they're trying to get into your psyche they're trying to get underneath your skin when they have years and years and years of practice they can really get to you they can really um you know hurt you uh, on a mental level so red van winkle it comes to this point within the short story where he's had enough you know he doesn't want he doesn't want uh the attention that he's getting from his wife anymore he doesn't want uh, her nagging anymore. And so what he does is, uh, he takes his dog, he takes his gun, he goes out into the, the Catskill Mountains in New York, and basically, he's never seen again for 20 years, because he meets this dwarf that's carrying this keg, that's carrying uh, this massive amount of alcohol, and the dwarf asks him um, to help, to help him, and, and he helps the dwarf, they go out to the mountains, they find, he finds other dwarves, and they're like playing bowling it's nine pins which is pretty much bowling i looked it up and it's pretty much bowling another word for bowling nine pins is um so they're playing a game the dwarves are playing a game and these creatures the way that um they're, they're described the way that um the, the 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 word choice is used to describe them uh they look like dwarves or beings or, or people that you don't want to mess with. They look like individuals that will hurt you. Like when I tell you Rip Van Winkle was afraid, he was afraid. He did not want to mess with these beings. And so what ends up happening is that um, he serves them alcohol or he waits for them to drink alcohol and then he takes the drink 
of their alcohol, of their 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 liquor, or we're not even sure that alcohol and you know it, it maybe moonshine. It's just an, a strong drink. Because to me, I can tell you my honest opinion. I think that these creatures are are not normal. I feel like they have some sort of, some sort of supernatural powers. They might be um, beings that we don't know about. Uh, they might be cosmic beings or something like that. Uh, they're they're part of mythology. They're they're. It seems like they have powers. I mean, their beards have different colors. The clothes that. Um, uh, Rip Van Winkle sees them in. It's not clothes that he's he's aware of or used to. They're dressed differently. It, it's their faces. Uh, it's it's kind of like it's very ominous because Rip Van Winkle says when he meets them, it's like a, a a dark scene. Even though they're playing a game, it kind of seems like there's like a tense, scary, melancholy mood between these dwarves, between these beings, and you. It feels like you just don't want to mess with these beings, and so. They play their game. Rip Van Winkle, it doesn't seem like he plays with them. I don't think he was invited to the party. Um, Rip Van Winkle drinks, and he keeps on drinking and drinking. He falls asleep. He falls into a slumber. You know, FYI, when, when you see a bunch of beings on the mountains, it's pretty much not wise to start drinking and eating their, like, you know, drinking their, their, their alcohol. You don't know them. If you don't know the beings, you don't know the people, they didn't invite you, you know... It's kind of, yes, they kind of allowed him to have a drink, but at the same time, you don't know them. But Rip Van Winkle is like a free soul, right? He's a free soul. He does what he wants. He's just trying to get away from his wife. So he drinks and drinks, and he ends up falling asleep uh, for 20 years. When he wakes up, uh, the mountains have changed. The, nat the nat nature around him has changed. Um, he calls for his dog because he went into the mountains with his dog, and his dog was nowhere to be found. Uh, his gun was literally rusted to the point where it barely worked. Um, he gets down from the mountains. He goes back into town. Uh, and everything's changed. There's new buildings, new streets, uh, the, the, you know, local stores, bars, whatever that he had uh, in in um, in the colonies that, you know, that any everything that was in the colonies before uh, the American Revolution, um... They were gone. Everything was changed. Society was changed. Uh, changed. I mean, when he before he went into the mountains, America or the colonies were underneath British rule. But when he comes down from the mountains, uh, America began basically. And so he goes into town. You know, at first they see him as a traitor, as a spy, because he. he you know he's twenty years old. He doesn't he doesn't stay young. So we have now this this twenty year older man uh, who thinks that he just fell asleep overnight on a mountain, but he didn't. He's been on the mountain for twenty years. Um, he grabs his old gun. He comes down the mountain in the same clothes that he went up the mountain with. So he's been wearing the same clothes for twenty years. He's, you know, hasn't, he hasn't showered for 20 years. He hasn't, you know, his face is just his face. So nothing has changed on him or in him in 20 years because in his mind, he just fell asleep last night. So when he gets back to town, everything looks strange. He thinks that, you know, maybe he drank too much alcohol. Um, you know, he's walking in town and he looks strange. The kids are pointing at him because he has a long gray beard. He's an old man now. He... He goes back to his house. He finds his dog. Surprisingly, his dog was still alive, which which was very fascinating to me because, you know, normally dogs don't live that old because it's 20 years plus however old the dog was. And it doesn't seem like for those 20 years that Rip Van Winkle was gone, it doesn't seem like anybody was taking care of the dog. So I don't know if his dog is still alive or maybe that's a a, a, a child of the dog that he had. Uh, we're not told all of that, but he goes into town, he goes into his house, he tries to find his kids, he tries to find his wife because he thinks that, you know, he went to the mountains yesterday. But slowly it reveals to him that everything has changed. The country that he lived, the colonies have changed, the country that he lived in has changed, um, the people have changed. Um, now it's all about freedom and, and, and Republicans and Democrats and, and society and American society and American values. This is a man, you know, when he goes into this 
uh, uh, pretty much election party or this election gathering where people are trying to decide or what, who to vote for. Um, you know, this is a time of, of, of George Washington. This is a time of kind of like renaissance and, and of beginning a time of beginning in the United States. And Rip Van Winkle is kind of like lost. He's like, what is going on? He, he slept through the entire um, pretty much transformation of America. And he shows up to this, this election party um, and, and all of the people are asking him questions as he looks old, he looks out of place, he has a gun in his hand, which is kind of like funny to me because, I mean, I guess at that time you could just walk around with a gun. Because like when he goes into this place, this bar, this, you know, nobody's like really paying attention to him even though he has a gun in his hand. That's, that's just very fascinating. Um, so... They question him. They think he was crazy, insane. He explains the story. Uh, he starts calling out people he knew when he was, you know, in the normal world. All of them are dead. Everybody's known, you know, in the past are dead. Some of them are still alive, but they don't, they're not even in the town anymore. Um, and then his daughter finally comes forward. And now, you know, his kids are all grown up. His daughter's in the crowd. She comes forward with a baby. And she's like, my father was Rip Van Winkle. And he reveals that I'm Rip Van Winkle. They find other old people in the town to confirm this, and then he gets confirmed that he is Rip Van Winkle. He wasn't him killed in the mountains and all that in the third. Some people believe that, you know, his story of being in the mountains for 20 years and, and drinking with dwarves and some mystical figures. Some don't. Um, the young people, people don't. And then Rip Van Winkle just goes back to his normal life of being lazy. And he's kind of, in a way, more happy because now he, his wife died because he was gone for 20 years his wife died and now he is free because he's not married anymore his kids are all grown up he has no more responsibilities he's an old man and he's just walking around and hopefully he gets a new gun and a new dog and just you know doing what he does but he goes back to a life of laziness and uh, in, a, in a way a life of luxury because all he ever wanted was to be lazy and that's what he gets for his retirement so the story of Rip Van, Rip Van Winkle is very interesting. In terms of a deeper meaning, in terms of analysis, this is a um, a piece where we see a lot about freedom uh, because Rip Van Winkle just wanted freedom all his life. He wanted freedom from his wife, and he gets freedom from his wife because she died. Um, the country, the country that he lived in, the colonies that he lived in, they, don't, they were under British rule. Uh, they obtained their freedom. Um, they are now uh, uh, their own country. So the country obtained freedom. Rip Van Winkle obtained freedom. He obtained freedom from his kids because he doesn't have to take care of them anymore. They're all married off and they're all adults. Uh, so Rip Van Winkle obtains freedom. The uh, America is born, which is you know all about freedom and liberty. Um, you also see change. There's a lot of change. It's kind of like this short story. I think. Um, symbolizes the, 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 the transformation that America went through because in, in a certain time, you had people living in the United States under British rule following British customs. Uh, but this story is all about um, throwing out the new and... Uh, um, wow, I just said throwing out the new. I mean throwing out the old and bringing in the new. Um, and, and a great example of that is um, the way in which that the nature changes because when Rip Van Winkle goes into the mountains, when he goes into the forest, when he goes into the wild, he sees it in, in, in one way. And when he's coming back down, everything changes. Uh, everything changes. Uh, nature is just different. So that shows you how nature grows over time. Nature doesn't stay uh, um, the same forever, um, which is extremely fascinating. So nothing, in a way, this short story kind of tells you nothing stays the same forever. Nature changes, people changes, cities changes, countries change, um, and realities change. So you see a lot of change in this short story. You see a lot of talk about freedom and liberty in, in America. Um, and you see a lot about family ties, um, because Reverend Henkel was really not happy in his life. Uh, but now since he's free and he doesn't have no wife, doesn't have a wife and, and he doesn't have to take care of his kids, he's completely free and he has liberty and he is in, uh, in America in a country that's all about freedom and, and personal choice. So that is my summary of Rip Van Winkle, uh, and, and analysis and deeper meaning or, you know, my opinions and, and, and views on it. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video.